All right, so today we're going to answer questions on worksheet eight, and then we're going to review for the quiz a little bit and talk about factoring. Sound like a plan? Okay, worksheet eight, what do you want to see? Do you need to see um, one that runs through the calculator? Like number two or number three, both are calculator questions. Um, six and eight on the back are calculator questions. 13, which one? Two? Okay. Number two, part of the issue is reading this funkiness. We're used to, oh, here goes my cursor thing every morning. And we'll be turning that sound off. Okay. Um, y equals mx plus b form. I don't know. I can't get rid of that. But or as the calculator says, doesn't it say y equals ax plus b? Is that how it looks on the screen when you do it? Okay. But the big thing is that the y value, we've been putting in list two. Here, what do they want us to use for the y value? Capital B. Do you see it? Because it says y equals mx plus b. So they want us to use the b is the y. This is going to be the y value. So the easiest thing to do is to put that in list two. There's another way you can do it. Okay, you can tell it to use x for list two and y for list one. But if you have an older calculator, that gets real confusing. So I'm just going to have type them in this way. And list one will be the hours. All right. Pulling up my little wabbit here. You guys are probably way ahead of me, right? So it's stat, enter to get there. Into list one, we're putting these bottom numbers, hours of TV. So it should be 1.3, etc. And then over here, we have the number of books. And I don't know. Okay, any questions about that part? All right, does anybody remember how we turned the stat plot on and looked at it? it that's not required for the quiz, but can anybody remember how we did that? Nope. It's second y equals, do you see right here it says stat plot above there? Second y equals, and then we hit enter a couple times to make sure it was on. And we had the little dots chosen, and we did L1, L2. Now, if you had typed them in the other list, then you'd had to make it L2, L1, which is another place it would be confusing. Okay, what's the important thing after this if you want to see it? First of all, if you have some garbage in Y equals, you might want to get rid of that. But to be able to see it, you need an appropriate window. Do you remember what we did? Zoom stat, which I think is zoom 9, at least on mine. Okay, not perfectly linear this time. But we definitely could find a line that goes through there, and it goes down, right? More TV you watch, less books you read. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. All right. Um, then we got to do the actual equation. So that's what? Nobody remembers the steps? That, right arrow, choice four. And then if you have an older calculator, well, you don't need a parenthesis, I guess. If you have an older calculator, you're going to type L1, comma, L2, comma, Y1, and that's under the VARS key. On the newer calculator, it's stat right arrow, 4, and then make sure it says L1, L2. And for the store, that's where we want to put a Y1. So it's VARS, arrow to the right. Enter, enter. Okay, so it's VARS, arrow to the right, and a couple enter. And then uh, go ahead and 
enter to calculate. How are we doing? Anybody need help? Now if you look at the graph, you should be able to see. All right, remember yesterday we talked about the same amount above as below. There's like three dots below and two dots above, so it's an okay line of fit. And even more important, back on the home screen, we had an R value of negative 9.78. Madison, are you not getting that? Are you good? Okay. I just wasn't sure. If, is somebody not getting it? Are we okay? All right. So someone tell me what it said since I just cleared it off. Y equals, or what is, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm already wrong. We're supposed to be writing B equals, what was the slope to two decimal places? Okay. Times the number of hours plus the intercept, anybody? Okay. B says if the linear model of error load, how many hours of television would a person be watching per day if they didn't read any books? So zero books would be putting the zero in here. So it's going to say zero equals negative 1.8 H plus 6.14 if I subtract. Okay, I can't write. I can subtract, maybe. Mm, I'm thinking three point something. Anybody? No? Two point something? What are we getting? 6.14 divided by 1.8. Both are negative, but that's 3.4. Books, hours, just kidding. We found H, didn't we? This was number of hours if they read no books. Sorry, I did confuse you. Um, I'm just going to practice and write down the R value was called the correlation coefficient. Okay, I can't spell that. And it was negative point, somebody have it still? Nine seven seven nine seven. Oh, just kidding. I don't want to pause. I want to take that. Uh, nine seven eight. Okay. All right. What else? Need to see another example. Some of them weren't really just calculator questions. Is there one you wanted to talk about? I'm not going to run around and check papers today because I'm just going to collect it all tomorrow, okay? But I'd be glad to go over something. No? We're good? We don't need to do another one just for more practice on the calculator? 13. Okay. The U.S. Census tracks the percentage of persons 25 or older who are college graduates. This da that data for several years is given below. Determine the trend. If the trend appears linear, if so, continues what year will the percentage exceed 35%? Now, if we put these in as the percent of graduates, 35 is going to be a whole number, right? You don't want to change it to 0.35 because that's the form they have these in, just so we're clear on that. Okay. Um, great. I'm not going to do this in the online calculator. Is that okay? Can you guys type it in yours? What did you put in for years? Oh, it says right here, use years since 1990. That's important because you won't get the right answer on the quiz. You'll get, you know, a minor error score if you don't do what it asks. It says years since 1990. So this would be 0246. Is that what you did? Okay. I'm going to do it on my calculator because I can type faster than the online one, all right? If you need me to show it, I can put it on the screen. But I hate when they have so many data points. It's like, yeah, whatever. We get the idea. Okay, possibly I have them typed in right. But what are we supposed to look at first? It actually said to determine if the trend appears linear. 
So that would be to look at the stat plot. You would want to go to your y equals and clear out your old equation. And then you'd want to do a new zoom 9. Because you have new, first you have to have your stat plot on, Hoffbauer. I don't have mine on. Now I do. You have a new set of data. Okay. I kind of got something that looks like, I'm kind of exaggerating, but there's a little bit of dippiness in it, yes? Okay. So I would say linear is pretty good. It actually could be like a logistic we'll talk about later this year that would flatten out. We can't really tell what's happening. There is one dot up there. So yeah, I would go with it's okay. And we can, for Y, we can tell what the R value is in a minute, right? All right. So if I go stat, right arrow, four, make sure it says L1, L2, store the equation. So bars, arrow to the right, enter, 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 enter a thousand times. Okay. Anybody get 0.47? 0.4, oh, it would be 0.476, so 4.8. Is that what somebody got? 20.75? Did I have them typed in right? I could have made an error. Okay. Um, mine doesn't have an R value because I didn't remember to turn it on in my calculator. Somebody have it down? No? No, just the R. Okay. So that's a good reason why it's linear, right? If I actually look at the graph with the line, it's coming through there. So it's pretty much half above, half below, right? Okay, and what year will exceed 35%? I could look at the table, yes, if I put the equation in. If I stored the equation, I could look at the table to see where it exceeds 35. If I want to do it algebraically, I want to know when the y value is 35 or greater. So 0.48x plus 20.75 is greater than 35. Where? So if I just want to do it algebraically, and I solve that equation, I got 29.7. Did anybody else get that? Or 30 years if you looked at the table? And 30 years after 1990. Did anybody have that? We good? Okay. I didn't make a silly mistake anywhere. Any more practice on this? Everybody's going to be able to do this on the quiz tomorrow. Everybody's R values showing up. Remember, as long as you remember correlation coefficient is R value, you're good. If it's not showing up on your screen and you need to bring your calculator up to me in the middle of the quiz and say, it got turned off, I don't remember how to turn it on, I'd help you do that. Okay. All right. I did it algebraically, okay? It said, in so what year will represent the percentage seeds 35? So I wanted it to be a Y value of 35. So I plugged it into this equation right here. And I said 0.48X plus 20.75, I wanted to be greater than 35. So I subtracted and divided, okay? If I had it stored, I don't know if this is going to work. If I had it stored, I could go to my table and see what year it finally exceeded 35 for the Y value. What did we get? 20, oh, I thought we got 20 and I was like, it's not working. Right there is the first time it exceeds. It's kind of not clear. But I got 35 after 20 years. Better? You good? Anybody else? 
magic technology. All right. Second thing we want to do today is review for the quiz. I'm thinking you should maybe pull out, anybody know what color it is? Gold? Yay, the gold sheet. Alyssa's helping me out. Okay, gold sheet. I can calculate slope. Can anybody tell me where in the packet we could find a practice question for slope? Yeah, 1A had examples, right, that we did as a class. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure you had to do one. Did you have to find just the slope of a line anywhere? Not so much. Um, you will have to calculate slope if you were to do not worksheet 9a number two is some practice because number two on worksheet nine says find the slope through ef and the slope through gh and then all that good stuff okay do you want me to write an example here we're good on slope just remember it's change in y over change in x and we're good Second thing on the quiz, there's some midpoint. Do you remember how to find midpoint? Was that also on 1A or 1B? 1A. We did as examples. And then on 3, did we have to do some practice on 3B or something or not? No, I didn't make you practice midpoint. Oh, yes, no. Well, actually, you had to on 4B. You had to do midpoint in order to find the perpendicular bisector. So you could just practice with those. Midpoint, remember, is just average x's and then average the y's. So you add them together and divide by two. Is that enough review of that? I can do an example of anything. Okay, distance between points, ew. Changes in x squared plus change in y squared. It's basically Pythagorean theorem. It's on, I'm guessing, 1 again. Yep. Worksheet 1A has an example. And let me see if I can find any practice. Yes, 9B has practice. Okay, so do you want me to do one off 9B? 9B also has distance, slope, all this. So 9B numbers 9 and 10 are practice of this. And this. Okay. Do you want me to practice a distance one? I'll just make one up. How's that sound? Um, 3, 7, and negative 2, negative 5. Okay. So remember, my shortcut method is how far apart are the x's? You can do the y's first if you want, but how far is positive 3 from negative 2 on the number line? 5. How far apart is 7 from negative 12 on the number line? Or from negative 5? Might be 12. 7 from negative 5. Since 1 is positive, 1 is negative, they're 12 units apart. I made one up that came out nice. That's crazy. 25 and 144 is 169. Which is what, guys? Okay. It's probably not nice on the quiz. It's probably a decimal. You can give me a radical, a simplified radical, or a decimal on the quiz. I'm fine. I don't think it specifies how to round on one I, tenths or hundredths. Either one I would take. Any questions about distance? Do you need me to write out the crazy long formula that says you subtract? Should be in. Okay. Graph a line in any form. 
We did that on worksheet 1B, maybe? And we practiced it on worksheet 2B? Um, there is also a practice problem if you want to do for review. There's one that might look just like the one on the quiz. Uh, where is it? Just kidding. All right. Oh. Yeah, there's not a good example. The one on the quiz is, is in standard form. So if I made one up, it maybe would say 7x plus uh, 2y equals 14. So you can rearrange it and graph it that way. Or remember, we practiced putting a 0 in for x. This would come out 7, put a 0 in for the y, and you get a 2 here, and then you could graph it 7, 2, like that. But either way is fine. Determine if lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. All right, again, a good practice for you to do tonight would be worksheet 9A number 2. We explored this idea on worksheet 2B. Number 7, 8? Eight, 8. Any questions on that? Do you need me to talk about one? What's the big concept there? Parallel lines have equal slopes. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocals. And that's it. Everything else is neither, right? Everything else is neither. If you have two-thirds and three-halves, but they're both negative or they're both positive, it's neither. Hey, guys, you're not asking for extra practice, so I'm just moving on. Um, this we talked about... I don't think we did actual examples until we did some of the odds together, right? So this was on worksheet 3A. Um, if you want more practice, worksheet 9B has some numbers 7 and 8. So these were examples. Here's some more practice. Um, and that really counts for both of those. Is that all right, guys? Both of these two. I don't know what that goofy shape is. Just pretend it's, I don't know, a light bulb? I don't know. Okay, I can write an equation given a point and a line that's either parallel or perpendicular. We did that on worksheet 4B was assigned. We practiced it on worksheet 2B. 4B has more practice probably too because you only did the evens, yes? You did the odds, okay? And I don't remember what you did. Anyway, you can go back and do the other one. Um, I was trying to see if there was more practice on 9. Is there more practice on that idea on 9? Um, number 5 on 9. Would be more practice. Also 11 and 12. So before you leave today, maybe take a picture of worksheet 9 key so that you can go home tonight and do some extra practice if you want. Does that make sense? You could take a picture of 10 um, if you want and, and do that for test prep practice. I'm not going to assign 9 or 10 as part of a homework check. Anybody need to see one of those? Okay. And we're good with slope intercept in standard form because it might ask for this in standard form. One of them on the quiz asks for standard form. Okay. I think it's this one. I think this one says in standard form. Okay, guys, where did we do this? Two points. Equation of a line through two points. Um, 2B, 
number 9b. And then we did it on 4b for practice. Uh, actually, it looks like 4a, numbers 16 and 17. For B, we did perpendicular bisector, and that's not on the quiz. And is there another one? Equation between two points. Uh, 9B, sheet 9B, number 9 and 10 has also equation of a line. Want me to do one off nine, worksheet 9B or not? Do you need to see one through two points? Okay. So worksheet 9B, I'll do number 10, okay? First it says find the distance, slope, and midpoint between these. Do you need me to practice all that? Distance would be change in X is 2, change in Y is 1. So that would be square root of 5 or whatever approximation that is. Okay, midpoint, anybody do midpoint real fast in their head? Add the x's, divide by 2, and we'd get what? 3. Add the y's and divide by 2, we'd have 1.5 is fine. Yep. Okay, slope, we're going to need to find the equation of the line anyway. 1 minus 2 over 4 minus 2, because we're doing y minus y over x minus x. I got negative 1 half. Did anybody else get that? Okay. What are you most comfortable with? Point slope? Okay. So I'm going to use this 4, 1 guy. And negative 1 half x minus 4. If I distribute, I get plus 2. So if it asked for slope intercept form, I would be here. If it asked for standard form, I would add the one half x over to the other side so it's on the same side, and then I would multiply through by a 2 so that I didn't have a fraction anymore. I'd have x plus 2y equals 6. So you could go back and do number 9 for some more practice on those concepts. All right. Um, it, this is just more of the same, right? Writing equation of a line in any form. What was the one on the bottom? From an application and predict values. This was all of worksheet five was notes. And all of worksheet six was practice. You wanted more practice on that kind of stuff? I don't know what to tell you. I don't think I have more practice on that. Just make sure you did all the worksheet six. Anybody need to see an example? I think worksheet six has quite a few. All right. Line of regression. We did notes. Worksheet seven. Does that sound right? And this is pretty much for all three of these. And so for practice, you can look at worksheet eight. And that's for all of those. Any question about what's on the quiz? There aren't any crazy questions. It's all stuff you've seen, okay? If you did the practice, you'll have seen it. And like I said, as far as I can remember, the only thing that's not on there, I know for sure there's not a perpendicular bisector question. This is what the quiz looks like, okay? It's one sheet of paper, front and back. It's not two, it's just one. There's 12 questions, okay? It won't be long. Okay. Then I want to talk about factoring for a second. Can you look at, I don't know, was it peach? The peach worksheet you picked up on the way in? Okay, 
On the back of the Peach Worksheet is a factoring flowchart. It just has some basic stuff from Algebra 2. It says, what kind of polynomial do you have if it has two terms? Remember, you can factor the, sum, the difference of two perfect squares, or you can factor the sum and difference of cubes. We probably need to do an example of cubes. All right, if you have three terms, first of all, remember to always look for pulling out a common factor. Wait a minute, that started way back up here, right? Pull out a common factor. You see what I'm talking about? Let's see if I can get my magic pen going here. Okay, factor out. This is important. Start there. And then you can do guess and check or diamonds. Does everybody know what I'm talking about with diamonds? Okay. I don't teach it that way either, but if you had a polynomial just said, uh, come on, x squared plus 3x plus 4, you can put the 4 on the top and the 3 on the bottom. You're looking for things that multiply to make 4 but add up to 3, which would be impossible, so let me try that again. How about 5? Could be a 5, and then you do 4 and 1. Multiply to make 4 and add up to make 5. Most of us just do trial and error, yes? We just go x and x, plus and plus means these are both plus. Factors that 4 that add up to 5 are 4 and 1. All right, factoring by grouping, we can do an example of that as well. Let's just look at some off the worksheet. Um, let's do number three. What's going on on number three? What's the first thing it said to do? Which is x. So now I have 4x squared minus 81. Okay, two terms. My choice when I have two terms, it could be the difference of perfect squares, or it could be the sum or difference of perfect cubes. Are those all perfect squares? So how does it factor? Perfect. 2x plus 9, 2x minus 9. Ooh, I can't write. Are we good? All right, pick another one for me to do. I want to do one with a cubic. Can I do number 9? I think we're going to run out of time. Is it 1 30, or 11.30 we're done? 38? Oh, good. I feel better. All right. This is cubes. And there is a list of perfect cubes at the bottom of the other side. Isn't there a little, like, listing of the cubes? Just to remind you those numbers. All right. These are perfect cubes. The pattern, I, I don't know what yours uses. I'm going to use A's and B's. The pattern looks like this. Okay, in the middle goes an A and a B. If this is plus, this one is minus, and the last one is plus. If it had been this pattern for this problem, if it started out A cubed minus B cubed, these are all on that little chart, guys. It would go A minus B, this is A squared, B squared. You really need to memorize this pattern for pre-calc, okay? Then in the middle goes an A, B. If this was a minus, this is a minus, and this changes to plus, and the last one's always plus. That's how I remember them. Okay, so this pattern is for this question. So what is the cube root of this? Five and an X, right? The cube root of this? Two. Okay. Once you've done that, I suggest you don't look back at the original problem. To finish the second parenthesis, you square this. What's 5x times 5x? 25x squared. At the back goes 2 squared, which is 4. In the middle goes 1 of these times 1 of these, which would be 10x. All right, then if this was a plus, this is a minus, and the last one is always a plus. I look at that and I think it should factor further. Do some of you look at that and think it should factor further? 
Oh, wait, I messed up. This should have a squared, right? Did I, did you write that on yours? 25x squared? Okay. I look at that and think it should factor further. Does it? How do you think it should factor? That's kind of what I think it should do, but does that work? This would actually give us a minus 20x in the middle, right? It doesn't factor further, okay? As long as what you have here did not have a common factor, it will never factor further when you do this pattern with the cubes, okay? Should we try 10 or 11 so you can practice this one more time, or 12? What could I take out on 12? This the two? Then I'd have 125x cubed minus 27. Is that right? Are 125 and 27 both cubes? Okay. So the two stays out front. Then I'm going to take the cube root, and then I'm going to have a funky leftover pattern. Anybody remember how it goes? Cubed root of this would be 5x. Cubed root of this, minus 3. Then the weirdo pattern that we're supposed to memorize is we square this one, which is 25x squared. We square this one at the back, which is plus 9. In the middle, we multiply these together and we get a 15x. But the weirdness of the pattern that you have to remember is if this is minus, this one's plus. Now, do you want me to show you that this works by foiling it all back together and proving it to you? Because you know, I love math. I could do that for you, but <laughs> you're trusting. Hey, one grouping problem. Which one? How do I know it's probably a grouping problem? There's four of them, okay? You wanna try 13? What could we take out of these first two? Five. Five P squared, left will be a P plus eight. Whatever we have in the parentheses is what we want to be in the second parentheses. So if I want a P plus eight to be back there, I must have taken out a two. And then remember, the big idea is if I now have this and this, and if I take the P plus 8 out of each, the leftovers can all squish together and go 5P squared plus 2, however you want to think about it. Okay. We're good with grouping? Okay. The key, the answers are all at the back of this. It's factoring practice, okay? I'm not going to collect it. I just need you to know that you need to know all these patterns, and it's factoring practice. Everybody good? All right. So quiz tomorrow. We've gone over what's on it. Be ready to hand in the homework check tomorrow. So if you want to spend the next three minutes pulling those worksheets out and stapling them together, you could certainly do that. And then tomorrow after the quiz, we'll work on the factoring practice, and I might even have another factoring worksheet for you. We'll see how it goes. We're going to start Unit 2, Quadratics, on Thursday. Friday is going to kind of be a work day slash SLO day. You have to take that pretest for the unit for the whole semester. Do you know what I'm talking about, guys? Have you done your pretest in some of your other classes? Okay.